All right, so we've seen some ways that we can draw text um, using the text command. Let's explore in the next couple of videos some other ways that we could think about using the things that we've already learned um, with with text. And to me, that's what's really cool about programming. Um, you have all these pieces that fit together in different ways. And one of the places creativity really comes in is as the way that you reconfigure these basic building blocks to do something unexpected and surprising. Um, so here, what we're actually going to do is create an image that we draw text onto. Then we're going to chop it up um, and make it interactive in a way that we wouldn't be able to with normal text. Um, I also realized in our last video that I made the console um, it's covered up by my image, so sorry if you were yelling at me that you couldn't see it. Um, there it is now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a template. I've loaded my uh, another font, Manteca, in here, which is cool. Um, and we're going to go ahead and um, get this going. So I want to make an image that has my text on it. And I'm going to do that in setup because this is something I want to um, do once when the program runs and then access it later. And um, so I'm going to create a variable called PG and um, use the create graphics command. Now we talked about this in CP1 about um, off screen canvas. And essentially that's what this does. It creates another canvas that's not seen on screen. Um, there's a link in the code for this that you can go check out if you want. Um, and this example and the next couple are kind of involved. So if you want to just jump ahead and sort of like run the examples and look at the code, you can definitely do that. You don't have to watch this whole thing. Um, but if it's helpful, I'm going to walk you step by step through how something like this gets made. Um, OK, so Create Graphics is going to ask for a size. I'm going to make that equal to the same size as my screen. And then um, we can do any command, any drawing command that we would normally do in the canvas, if we add in front the name of the variable and a period, then it applies to that canvas instead. So I've got a whole bunch here. I'm just going to paste those in. You can see pg.background, text font, text align, text size, fill, no stroke, all that stuff. Um, and that's only going to apply to that graphics object, not to our regular canvas. Then we can do pg.text. I'm going to have it say no, and I'm going to put it in the center of my graphics. Um, now, because they're the same size as our um, window, the graphics is, um, technically it doesn't make a difference if it's pg.width divided by two or just width divided by two. But I think this is smarter in case I change something later in my code. Um, I want to be able to like um, have this adapt better. So I think that makes more sense. OK, then the next thing I want to do is split this up into tiles. So I'm going to make another global variable up here called tiles. Um, and then I'm going to say tiles equals a blank array. Now you could do this up in the top. I'm doing it in setup because like in our last example, if the window gets resized and I want to call setup, then it's going to reset the tiles array rather than adding a bunch more tiles to it. Um, and then I'm going to go through my image in the grid and grab subsections. So I'm going to say four, let y equals zero, y is less than pg dot height. Um, and you know, I think this is a good place for me to add a tile size variable. So I'm going to create that up here too. And let's make that equal to 100 for now. And this is going to be the width. And then we'll also do tile size. Great. So we're walking through our image by big chunks. And now I want to grab a section. So I'm going to create a variable called tile. Um, oh, so I'm, <laughs> I haven't looked at my example very carefully. Uh, I ended up making a tile class for this. You wouldn't need to do a class. You could grab an image. Um, but I think this is going to just make this a little easier. So um, let me go ahead and save you the trouble. I'm going to paste the constructor for my class down here so you can see it. Um, so my constructor, I spent some time thinking about this. Um, I want my tile to, and the reason I did a class here is I want my tile to include an X and a Y coordinate. Um, and a size, and then the image itself. And that's a perfect example of why you might want to create a class, because you have a bunch of different kinds of data you want to keep track of. If I just have this list of images, um, I wouldn't know where they go on the screen. 
I could maybe keep track of some other stuff or I could have a two dimensional array, which is a list of lists. Um, all that stuff gets a little crazy to keep track of. I think doing a class here makes a lot of sense. So I'm gonna pass in, uh, when I make a new, new tile, I'm gonna pass in X and Y, its position. I'm gonna pass in tile size and I'm gonna pass in um, our uh, graphics. And what I've done down in my constructor here is then I'm creating a new image um, and an image is different than graphics. You'll notice we used create graphics up here. Graphics lets us use all the drawing commands. An image really is just pixels. So it doesn't have any of that extra stuff. And then I'm using um, the copy command. Um, so this.image accesses the image inside the tile. Copy then grabs a subsection of the, the full thing that we passed in at the X and Y point at this size. And then it places it at zero, zero in our individual little tile image um, and all the way across. So it's a little, there's a lot of steps kind of here, but the nice thing is this keeps our setup really clean and all I have to do is create the tile from this big thing and my constructor does all the rest of the work. Uh, and then I wanna add this to my list of tiles. So I say tiles.push tile. And we could do, go ahead and just make sure everything is working. Um, by printing tiles to the console. And we can see here, I get an array, make that a little bigger. I get an array of objects that have X and Y coordinates, they have an image attached to them and that kind of stuff, which is what we want. Um, cool, so now we need to add some way of displaying these. And once again, this is the perfect use of a class because we can um, really just kind of customize this in one place. Uh, I know I wanna go to the right location using translate and we'll go to this.x, this.y. Remember, you have to include this for variables that are inside that class. Otherwise, um, JavaScript doesn't know what you're talking about. So don't forget the this, it's easy to forget. Um, and then I'm gonna say image this.img zero, zero. And then in our draw loop, I'm actually gonna get rid of the background because I don't need it. And I'm gonna just say for uh, I, I is less than tiles dot length. Now I'm just going to go through all my tiles and do tiles I dot display. And again, my draw, draw loop becomes really simple because I've done all the hard work in the class. So now that's not that exciting. <laughs> it's just the word no, <laughs> big letters on the screen. Um, but we can now do some cool stuff with this that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, and that is rotate this. I think this will be really fun. So let's, we can just do that right in the display. We can say rotate map, uh, we'll do mouse X between zero and width, zero and two pi, like that. And so now as I move my mouse across the screen, we get this really cool glitchy, uh, looking thing and then it pops back over to where it was before. Um, this is fun, be, you know, and also because I don't draw the background every frame, we get these weird trails and stuff where it's not being seen, um, which I think is kind of rad. So let's add um, another thing to this that I think is kind of cool. Um, this is the basic idea, but we can keep adding to this. Let's say up here um, in our graphics, we could start adding a whole bunch of stuff to this that's all gonna get carried through. So if I say pg.text size smaller 12, um, we could use a for loop. We could draw some random stuff. So we could say pg.text, uh, the word yes, in contrast with the word no, um, at random locations. And now it's gonna have all this stuff on here. And those are also, because they're part of that image, uh, those rotate with it, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we could also change things like the tile size. We can make it smaller and see how that changes, how this looks. Now there's a lot more tiles. I think I like that better. Gets real glitchy. We could, um, 
you know, increase the number of these random yeses in the background, all the stuff starts to be able to be changed. So there's not, you know, there's a lot of times when you don't need to do something like this, you don't need to make an image out of your text, but it does afford you some really cool things. You could do image processing to this, you could apply filters, you could um, cut this in random tiles, you could have these auto rotate, you could start to think about some really cool things um, that you might be able to do with this. I did, um, I should have pulled this up before, I did put together kind of a fun, um, oh, it's not in there. So I don't have a code for you for this because I kind of want you to, um, let's see, where is it? No, I can't find it now. Here we go. So I didn't want to share the code with you for this because I think it's just maybe too much. Um, but here's kind of a fun example. This takes a little while longer to load. Um, this automatically rotates and it's changing the text as it crosses. So it goes from yes to no and the background flips and then it goes no to yes as it's rotating. So there's some weird stuff happening here. I've actually made two tiles for each um, and for each tile, it has a random point somewhere in the middle, but they're all different for when the tile should change from one to the other. So they don't all happen at the same time. They kind of do this scattered um, effect as they change. And um, I think this is really fun. It, it leads me down a rabbit hole of ideas of like, oh, what if it changed a whole bunch of times and read through a sentence as it's going or whatever. So you could think about some cool ways. I didn't want to share the code with you for this because I think it's just a little, you know, this is my exploration of this idea, but I bet you could think about ways that you might be able to accomplish this um, using the stuff that we just talked about. Um, so in the next example, we're also going to work with images to load points from the text, and then we'll explore some other stuff um, as we go along.